After years and years of collecting games, you'd think I already have everything, but sometimes I'll go to grab a charger or something to carry my games in and realize I don't. But thanks to Timu, I do. Timu is the perfect place to get exactly what I need at a low, low price. They've got just about everything you could think of, including tons of video game related products with site-wide savings of up to 90% off. They've got accessories for just about every video game system, so I grabbed a variety of items to try out. The Switch case and game card holder were exactly what I was looking for, giving me easy access to the games I love. I also grabbed a few things for the PlayStation, including this multi-controller charging stand for PS5, so now I never have to worry about my controller dying on me in the middle of a game again. They even have awesome stuff like this Wii to HDMI converter, which is perfect for upscaling it to 1080p. And that's just scratching the surface. Download the Timu app now through my link or code in my description, and you can get yourself coupons adding up to $100 for free. And not only that, if you use my code and apply the best coupon in the bundle, new users can grab themselves a Nintendo Switch OLED for only $254. That's around $100 in savings. Thanks to Timu, you just can't beat it. Again, if you want to get $100 in coupons from Timu for free, just click the link in my description to download the Timu app or use my code. It's that easy. You ever play a video game and everything's going real well, but then all of a sudden there's the water level. Yeah, those water levels usually suck, but not all the time. This video is about the water levels that I remember best, for better or worse. Check it out. Metroid Prime Underwater Frigate. The Metroid series has always been one of my favorites. Super Metroid, for example, is still one of my all-time favorite games. The franchise is full of unforgettable gems with amazing gameplay, but you can bet your shiny metal Sam ass that one thing that's always sucked is moving anywhere underwater before getting the gravity suit. I know what you're gonna say. Things move slower in water, but this is ridiculous. It's like Sam has strapped a couple of cinder blocks to her feet. As soon as you hit the water level in a Metroid game, you know that you have to find that gravity suit as soon as humanly fucking possible. This couldn't be more true with Metroid Prime on the GameCube, the first game to take Samus into the first person. This was Metroid's time to shine again, so of course Nintendo knocked it out of the park. But the dreaded water level still exists. It's foggy as hell, there's enemies everywhere, and the best you can hope for is to have the double jump and immaculate platforming skills. One section in particular takes you down a winding series of underwater tunnels connected to a downed spaceship called the Underwater Frigate. Then, after getting through a significant chunk, the game decides, fuck you, go back, get the gravity suit, and now you can continue. What makes this a borderline sin is that the game doesn't warn you ahead of time, so you can waste 30 minutes going through all this shit and then be told to turn around and try again. To quote a friend of mine, that's bullshit. Ninja Turtles Underwater Dam. I've talked about this one plenty of times before, so you already know my feelings about it, but it has to be included because the underwater area in the dam was notorious when we were kids that damn dam. The idea of the stage is that you have to defuse a bunch of bombs before the time limit is up. Along the way, there's electricity that will shock you. Yeah, it can be annoying sitting there waiting, so sometimes you get impatient and get hit by these, which will eat away at your health. And there's other hazards too, like these big machine wheels. So by the time you get to the seaweed tunnel, you'll be depleted of health. Yeah, this is the worst part right here with all this seaweed because it takes your health away so fast. And the first time you encounter this, you're pretty much guaranteed to die. A lot. One thing you can do is switch turtles midway in order to have more health to make it through. But back in the 80s, we didn't know that shit. We just died. But the point is, when we tried this as kids, it was way too hard. The time limit sucked, and it was stressful. And the deadly seaweed just made this whole thing a cruel joke. It was the stuff of nightmares. Super Mario 64, Dire Dire Docks. 
What can you really say that hasn't already been said about Mario 64? Launching with the Nintendo 64, it not only changed Super Mario for years to come, but it also brought Mario into the third dimension for the first time and showed that platforming games could work in that space. One aspect of the Mario games has always been the water levels, which, generally speaking, haven't been that bad. Sure, those whirlpools in Mario 3 were pretty annoying, but I can't remember a time I dreaded a water level in that game. And quite frankly, the same can be said for Mario 64. Now, there are a few water levels in the game, but Dire Dire Docks is definitely the most memorable. Right away, you enter the painting, and Mario is doing a triple somersault into a massive lake. Badass in its own right. But then, the music kicks up, and you know you're in for a treat. Kind of like the music in the underwater Donkey Kong Country levels. Even if you're not a big fan of the level, the music is awesome. Those things combined, along with the tight controls, even underwater, which we all know can be a crapshoot, makes this stick out to me. Now, the actual level itself can be a little frustrating, considering you are still underwater dealing with an air meter, but at least Nintendo curbed some of that annoyance by adding air bubbles throughout the level for Mario to breathe, like in Sonic. I guess the only major gripe I have is that getting all the stars for this level can get tedious, especially when the game has you go above water into the uh, dire dire dock, I guess it's supposed to be. The camera is just fighting against you in this part too, so I typically end up skipping it. Yeah, fuck it. Sonic the Hedgehog, Labyrinth Zone. You can't talk about water levels without talking about Sonic. Every game in the original series, Sonic 1 through Sonic & Knuckles, seemed to get a little better than the last at the whole concept. Hell, Sonic 2 probably has more water levels than the rest of the series. It makes me wonder if Sega was actively trying to improve on the work they did in the first game by having so many levels like this in the second, because oh boy, did it need it. Right off the bat, the game gives you a bubble shield, which is awesome because you don't have to worry about Sonic running out of air. That is, if you can keep it long enough. This level is full of enemies covered in spikes, out for Sonic's blood. You'll need a miracle to make it out of here without losing that bubble or all your rings in the process. And then it's only a matter of time before Sonic runs out of air and that annoying beeper starts blasting in your ears. Ugh, hate that shit. You'll be hunting for air bubbles to survive another minute while dodging booby traps out of something like an Indiana Jones movie. And if you miss the bubble by even a second, it's game over. Oh, and did I mention you're doing this all at half speed underwater? You know, in the game about moving really fast? This might actually be worse than Metroid Prime, because at least with that game I can reload my save or come back later. With Sonic, I just die over and over again, and my only rest is playing the first level again to get back to it. And you need to beat three of these levels to get to the next stage. It's torture. At least when you finally do beat it, the game goes easy on you. Hey, it might still be hard, but at least you don't have to hear that annoying timer anymore. Earthworm Jim, Tube Brace. Okay, so I didn't intend to make this a list of the worst levels per se, but this one is still really fresh in my mind after doing the AVGN episode on the trilogy a couple months ago. Like the nerd said in that episode, it's a great game with great variety and a sense of humor, but it has some frustrating parts. While the platforming can get pretty tough at times, the real nightmare begins at the water level down the tubes. Everything starts off innocent enough, you know, just an earthworm in a spacesuit blowing up cat people and riding on a giant hamster. But then you're dropped into a submarine with wonky controls and a time limit. Yeah, it's Ninja Turtles NES all over again. The problem is that you can't really take your time because that timer goes by so quickly. But you can't go too fast because every time you hit a wall, your ship cracks. So after several white knuckle attempts, you'll probably beat it and let out a sigh of relief. And then, guess what? You're forced to do it again. But of course, this time, the time limit's even stingier and the corners you need to cut are tighter. So the whole thing turns into a frustrating controller breaking mess. Just skip the level with the debug mode and never think about it again. <laughs> Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. So you had to know this was gonna make the list. How could it not? Much like Metroid and Mario, 
the Zelda series is one that's very near and dear to my heart to this day. It's also a series with a lot of amazing water levels to choose from. The Great Bay Temple from Majora's Mask might actually be the best one overall. I mean, being able to turn into a fish person makes the whole underwater swimming part a lot easier for sure, and it helps that the puzzles aren't as contrived. There's also the Swamp Palace from A Link to the Past, which has you traversing from inside the dungeon and above it. It also added an additional challenge of having to raise the water level in the temple to gain access to new areas. This is an idea that Ocarina of Time ran with for their water temple, which um, starts to become a little bit of a problem. While the concept is similar, A Link to the Past has an overhead perspective, so it's easier to keep track of everything that's happening after lowering or raising the water, and it usually all changes on the same screen. Ocarina, being 3D, makes it a lot harder to keep track of it, because you can't see everything happening when you change the water level, so you might miss important things like doors opening on different floors off screen. Also, I just realized how confusing it is to hear me say raise the water level and then lower the water level on the water level video. But anyway, that's all annoying enough. But the real pain in the ass is constantly having to go into the menus to put on the iron boots so you can sink to the bottom to do just one thing and then immediately go back into the menus to take them off to do another thing. It's incredibly tedious. I heard the 3DS version of the game actually fixes this problem, so maybe I'll try that version someday to test it out myself. But let's be honest, the most annoying thing about the Water Temple is that stupid key hidden under a block. Come on, Nintendo, now you're just messing with us! With all those problems, it's no wonder people are still talking about it to this day. Well, maybe it's because the rest of the temple is a masterpiece. Or maybe because it's got Dark Link. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. Hope you enjoyed that. That was just a small sampling of the thousands of water levels that exist. But let me know your favorites or your least favorites. Either way, you know what to do. Leave a comment and uh, let me know what you think.